I'm making this video fully aware that if the Oilers come back, they win game six and they win game seven, I'm going to look like a fool. But based off of what we saw after game five last night, and based off of what we saw this morning, yes, I waited a little bit to make a video about this because I wanted to hear the outcome of the Darnell Nurse thing, the Oilers are screwed. Holy crap, what happened yesterday was absolutely astounding. And I know I said that yesterday's Game 5 between Toronto and Tampa, that was an exciting game. Throughout the entire 60 minutes, that was extraordinary as an entertainment piece of media. Wasn't the best hockey being played, but it was a fun, fun game. Edmonton, LA the next game, though. Holy... Was this not a game that got you on the edge of your seat as well? And not really for the right reasons. Sure, you had some good comebacks. You had the Oilers going out there and doing their thing. You had McDavid, who had four points. You had Dreisaitl, who had all the goals towards the end. Connor McDavid was carrying the Oilers, and they still weren't able to get it done. Edmonton drops it 5-4 in overtime, and you see the goals that Mike Smith is letting in here. Man, Coach Ryan D talked about this on his channel, but Mike Smith is a good goalie, you know? Like, he is legitimately, when he's on his game, he's pretty good, he can handle the puck well, he can make clutch saves when he needs to, it's just, the Oilers in their depth... It's non-existent, and they don't help this guy out. So much to the point that you have a game against LA yesterday where they're playing such a strong team game that they're able to overpower Edmonton and just do everything right. I don't care about the blowouts in games two and games three. Edmonton, your backs are against the wall, and you're playing against what is probably, in some people's minds, mine included, an inferior team. The LA Kings don't have the star power that Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl provide. And if they do, hey, guess what? That star power is out. You don't have Drew Doughty on your team. You also have Victor Arvidsson, who is not playing either. This is a depleted LA Kings roster that is just playing everything right, that has the leadership from guys up top, and they're getting it done in hockey games because of it. Even if they pull off what is a choke in the third period, giving up a 4-2 to lead and allowing the Oilers to tie it because Connor McDavid is Connor McDavid and Dreisaitl, hey, he's Dreisaitl too. The LA Kings know their strengths and they get to it. They work on what they have in front of them and they just keep on bouncing on those chances. The Oilers just cannot start off periods well. I don't know what it is about this team. Okay, no, Dreisaitl said it's the room. So yeah, okay, let's go with that. It's the room. The morale, the identity, the team, just their desire to go out there and start games on time, start periods on time, it doesn't work. It's not there, and L.A. keeps on taking advantage of that. They took advantage of that in the first. They took advantage of that in overtime. And now they have a 3-2 series lead because of it. Troy Stetcher is the guy that gets on the board first. Stetcher from Edler. My heart will go on. Jim Benning. My gosh. No more Stetcher. That's like one of the worst ones that Benning was able to let go. Troy Stetcher, everybody. He gets signed by Detroit. He gets traded over to LA and now he's scoring playoff goals, clutch playoff goals, the opening goal in game five, as he had the opening goal in the previous game too, I believe. Assisted by Edler too, so that makes things even better, but Troy Stetcher takes advantage of the Oilers and their poor start. He gets on the board quickly, and then Connor McDavid decides to go beast mode in the second period, setting up Zach Cassian after having an open opportunity himself. He wraps it around, sets it in front, Zach with the tip in, and it's 1-1. But then the LA Kings just take advantage after that. Adrian Kempe gets his first of the playoffs. Andreas Athanasiu gets his first of the playoffs, too, in quick succession here. And the Oilers have a 3-1 deficit heading into the third period. Now, Connor McDavid decides to do Connor McDavid things. He gets the opening goal. He brings it within one. Philippe Deneau gives the Kings a two-goal lead once again. And then Dreisaitl, hey, he decides to come off two. Dreisaitl gets two goals in three minutes to tie the game up at four apiece. And at this point, I'm kind of saying, okay, from here on out, this is going to decide the series. 
From here on out, what happens in the last few minutes of this game, and potentially over time, this will decide who wins and who goes on to play the Calgary Flames in the second round. Sorry, Dallas, I'm going to say Calgary's going to win. I had them winning my bracket too, so I would prefer if Calgary won. Because I was kind of saying with Toronto, you know, they had that culture win earlier in the day. They came back down two goals to win against the reigning two-time Stanley Cup champions. They did it. They overcame their demons. But for Edmonton, they haven't necessarily had a win like that yet. All their wins have been blowouts. The other games where they're struggling, they struggle hard. This game was a struggle too. And so to see them come back and tie things up 4-4 after facing all that adversity, sure, you needed Connor McDavid to come alive to do it. Connor McDavid, I said he had four points. It appears on NHL.com that the first dry saddle goal was unassisted, even though that was a Connor McDavid setup. But either way, Connor McDavid had to go beast mode. He had to carry this team like he is always doing. And then you see overtime and the LA Kings score a minute in. Adrian Kempe absolutely walks around Duncan Keith. Kempe pulls a Connor McDavid on Connor McDavid, who is the trailer on that play. He's not really skating. I mean, I get it. He's tired. It's been a minute long shift. But the LA Kings just go out there and take a lead, and you see the two Edmonton fans in the stands that leave immediately after that goal goes in. It's a Troy Stetcher assist as well. So Troy, good on you. Boy toy named Troy used to live in Detroit, now he's living in LA doing his thing, scoring goals, getting assists. It is fantastic to see Troy Stetcher revive his career this way after being healthy scratched earlier on. But that kind of just epitomizes the series, does it not? Look at the LA Kings and how much depth they've been getting everywhere throughout their lineup. They've got four lines. They've got a team system that works. Edmonton is only getting offense from Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Now, I know it wasn't like that in the blowout game, but that's the blowout game. Once a game becomes 4 or 5 nothing, you don't have anything to learn from those types of games anymore. And based off of how Quick has been playing too, I mean, what are the odds that he goes out there and lets in another, like, six-goal performance? Furthermore, you have Mike Smith. How in the heck does Mike Smith not stop these pucks? It's because the team in front of him does not give him the support to put him in positions to make these saves. These goals in isolation don't look great at all. Mike Smith getting the puck wrapped around him in overtime by Kempe. Smith is letting in five hole shots. He's letting in clean wristers, but still, the team in front of him doesn't give him any support. What do you expect? He's getting these looks all the time because the team just can't defend. And now you look at what happened with Darnell Nurse. The guy suspended for game six. He headbutted Philippe Deneau, and I don't really... Look, I don't want to get into an argument, oh, is Deneau soft, like, Darnell Nurse just kind of charged at him and he fell backwards, like, I'm not going to go into that, the fact is he's suspended, the fact is he's not going to be there, and now, look, Edmonton's going to be playing without their best defenseman. Duncan Keith is going to be given more minutes, and Duncan Keith, I don't know if we've been watching the same series, but in my eyes, Duncan Keith has not looked great in this series, so... For Edmonton, this is ultimately the worst case scenario. Connor McDavid, what is that stat that was getting posted around everywhere? The fact that in multi point playoff games for McDavid, like the Oilers are one and whatever, like they've got a losing record when Connor McDavid gets multiple points in these playoff games. Something weird like that. I don't know what the exact stat is. It might not have even been a stat. Maybe I just made it up. But either way, talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about the LA Kings, the Edmonton Oilers. I do believe that the Oilers are a better team, but the LA Kings are playing like a better team right now. This Oilers squad just, they take their few blowouts, they run with it, and they can't capitalize anywhere else. The LA Kings, on the other hand, they play a complete game. They've won the game so far with complete games, and you've got really good defensive presences going out there, doing their thing, shutting down the rest of the Oilers' offense. And they're doing it without Doughty as well. Like... Look, the Kings are like my fourth favorite team, but I didn't expect them to do this well. The Kings are a young team. The guys that are supposed to carry them into the future, Kaliev, Anderson, Arvidsson, these guys are not old like Dustin Brown and Drew Doughty are, and Jonathan Quick. I mean, look, this was supposed to be not really the year for LA to do their thing, but they're doing their thing and they're doing it well. Now they've got a 3-2 series lead on a team with two of the best players in the gosh darn world. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Edmonton, LA, the fact that Darnell Nurse is now suspended, and now the LA Kings, they've just got to win one more. They've just got to pull it off one more time. The Oilers are very well capable of winning two in a row. We saw those in games two and games three. They can do it, but I just don't think it's possible anymore. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And...
Bye.